Morning. How you doing, guys? You all right? Thanks for coming back onto the boat with me. Um, it's nice to have a bit of company, and we're all on my own again because it's well. The weather's turned again, isn't it? It was, uh, it was looking a bit more spring-like, and now we've gone back to this blooming wind and horrible rain. So I'm on my own. Uh, like I say, thanks for joining me again. Um, been getting some great comments from uh, from subscribers, you know, uh, which spurs me on, keeps me going, and, uh, and it's nice to hear from you. So I really appreciate you all. Uh, joining me on the boat and watching the progress. So keep doing that. Like I say, any new ones, subscribe, press the bell icon, so uh, obviously you get notified of any any new videos that come up. Uh, like I say, I really enjoy having you having you up here with me, keeping me company if you like. But, uh, so we've got the lining in, got the lining and lining done, or most of it. I've still got the, uh, the bow to do, so that's gotta be finished. Uh, what I intend to do before the water tank goes in, I'm going to uh, I'm going to batten the floor, insulate in between it, and then I'm going to put a ply line in, 18 uh, mil ply on top of that, to give the tank some support. And then obviously I'm going to insulate the rest of the bow, and uh, obviously stop the water freezing in the colder weather. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case, but you know, belt and braces just uh, get a bit of insulation around it just to make sure. So the line is pretty much finished. Uh, what I'm going to do now, exciting bits to do, thank goodness. Uh, so today what I'm going to do, I've come up the boat obviously to uh, to put some of this in. So I'm going to start putting the ring main in. Uh, 240 volt ring, uh, 230 volt of course, uh, ring main. And uh, all the way around the boat and that's going to feed uh, obviously all the sockets to the various appliances and and outlets that we're going to use uh, throughout the boat. So it is going to be a ring main. So obviously, for those of you who don't know, and I ain't, you know, trying to trying to patronise you at all. But uh, but for those of you who don't know, a ring main, of course. So the cable starts from the the source, uh, which would be in a breaker in our case, uh, and it'll go all the way around the boat, right the way around, round to the very end, and all the way back, and connect back to the source. So it is a continuous ring, and obviously uh, the, uh, it'll 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 branch off to the various sockets and accessories uh, that we put on the ring main. So uh, so this is the stuff. It's Arctic, what they call Arctic blue. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a blue cable. Three core, cool, two point five mil. It's made by a company called Nexon. Uh, but I mean, there's all sorts of brands, you know. I mean, this was just made by Nexon. <coughs> Got it from Screwfix. It was about. Uh, it's a 50 meter roll. It was about 65 quid, I think it was, something like that, uh, which is a typically typical price for for two and a half mil, two and a half mil cable. You can get it in one and a half mil. You can get it in four mil. But typically, when I say four millimetres, I mean four square millimetres or 2.5 uh, millimetres square. That's its cross-sectional area. Not not a block of, uh, of four millimetres, if you like. It's uh, it's the CSA of the cable. Uh, cross-sectional area of the cable. Uh, and and like I say, the reason it's blue and the reason it's Arctic, uh, called Arctic blue is because it's... Uh, it works well in colder weathers. A lot of PVC, when it gets cold, it gets brittle and, and stiff. Um, uh, this remains flexible at lower temperatures, so it's ideal for boats. And in fact, really, that's what you know. That's what you've got to use. Don't think you can just use normal flex. It's got to be Arctic blue. Typically, blue denotes 230 volts, you know, or, uh, or uh, typically 230 volts. They do do a yellow version of it as well, which tends to be more 110 or lower voltages. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so that's what we're up to today. Uh, I'll I'll go into a bit more detail about the cable. But join me while I run the ring main round. Of course, there's going to be 12 volt circuits as well. Uh, I'm going to go through the, through those individually. As uh, so, I'll do the lighting circuit. Then I'll do the circuits up to the toilet because obviously we need a 12 volt feed for the toilet. Uh, uh, 12 volt feed for the nav lights, 
uh, 12 volt circuitry for the uh, for the lighting, the actual main cabin lighting, then of course USB sockets. Uh, th there's loads of 12 volt. Uh, so I'll go through each circuit individually uh, and explain the best that I can about it. Of course, uh, <coughs> uh, but today what we'll do we'll we'll start off and we'll get the, uh, the 230 in. So come on, let's crack on. Hey guys, so an old dry lining box, just an old one, no clips in it or anything, just to draw, just to draw around. So that's the position of my socket. So just scribe round it. And then of course, just get your knife. Like so. Put the insulation out. So you ain't got to be too pushy because you ain't ever going to see. There we go. Then we get our drill, just pop a couple of holes through to get the cables in. drill just to make a nice big hole just to get the two cables through like I say it's got to be true because we're on a ring main of course but of course there'd still be two cables if you were just daisy chaining them together so that's that let's get me side cutters Pull a bit of slack through, and then best to leave as much. So obviously my cable's got to go back there, then underneath and through. So let's leave a nice piece just to make the connections in the back of the box. So that's that. One. Pop them, pop them both up. Still full of sawdust, that is. Let's just 
As you can see now, I've got the ring in, uh, all nicely tucked away, cables well supported. Obviously, it always looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? You know, uh, until all the boarding's over it and it's all uh, it's all concealed and all looking nice. But uh, but there you go, it's all uh, it's all running now. All the two thirty. I mean, I have run mine in a ring. Uh, you ain't got to. You can run it in a in a radial but you, you can probably see that I have put a little bit of uh, 12 volt cabling in as well uh, this is for the lighting circuit I will go into more detail on that uh, in the next vlog but uh, this was the job today so the 230 is in as you can see uh, and then next week we'll We'll look at the 12 volt circuit. So, until then, have a good week. Hey, morning, guys. Just thought I'd bring you in on uh, on this little bit. I'm running obviously the 12 volt um, lighting circuits. So, uh, obviously, I've got to uh, everything 12 volt, of course, has got to go in conduit, or uh, it's got to be. Uh, insulated and then 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 it's got to have a mechanical insulation uh, applied as well just like the uh, the arctic blue is so it needs to be uh you know a double insulated uh, what's the word i'm searching for so it needs to be insulated then have a mechanical insulation on top of that if you're just going to run it in flex if you're going to run it in single core cables like i am then uh, then of course you need to protect the cables Obviously, they've got their PVC insulation, their thin wall PVC insulation uh, applied normally. Then we need to add that extra protection by putting them in trunk. See, I've uh, so there you can see I've cut, I've cut out uh, the uh, the space in the insulation for the to receive the box. Then there's trunk in there. I've just uh, cut out for the uh, for the conduit there. As you can see, it goes up. And above and then right the way across to the center to the center of the boat there you go look if you can just see that okay so there's our conduit now where the cables are going to be popping out for the lighting uh, this is the switch of course there you go drill through there now I've just taped it to the ceiling just to stop it flopping about and of course it goes through some more button in there and then of course down the wall to the switch so what I'm going to do I'm going to foam that in place and then of course the the conduit will sit in there nice and neatly and I'm going to put some spray foam insulation up so uh, to hold it in place and then that'll be nice
Okay, so <coughs> let me get hold of my spray foam. And of course, all I'm doing is flooding this now. Because of, I don't want to lose the insulation properties either of the foam that I've removed. So I'm just putting a generous amount in, as you can see. So I'm putting plenty in. Like so. Blasting it down there as well. And again, the spray foam holds the conduit rigid as well. So, uh, Once it's set, it holds it nice and tight in place. So there you go. Right, let's just pop him in. I don't want to get this all over my fingers, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get something just to poke it in. There you go. I've got my chisel. Okay. So I'll poke that in. There you go. See, it's just at the bottom there. Lovely job. Now, of course, when the spray foam expands, it's going to try and push the conduit out. I've made a couple of blocks. There's a, there's, there's a chunk of timber on the back of this. On the back of this, as you can see, it's just pressing in there, just pressing the conduit back into the boat. Pop a screw on it just to secure it. And again. You can see there's a little nib on the back of that. All I'm doing is putting the nib on the cable. Don't matter what position you put it in really, it's just to hold it in place, just for a sec while the, while the foam grabs hold. Of it. There you go. It ain't got to be too strong, as long as it just holds the conduit in place while it's setting. Put a little bit more on it. I'll top it off after. There we go. Then of course our cables will come out the bottom. So there you go guys, that's how I've put the conduit in. To receive the, uh, the thin wall cables. Let's carry on. I've used these uh, plastic tie wraps and obviously you can see the little sticky back uh, pads that you can get from screw fix. They've got a little adhesive pad on the back and then you just pop a couple of screws in, holds them tight and then tie wraps uh, thread through them and that's what I've used all down the boat, keep it all tight. Just digressing a little bit, just taking a break from the electrics for one minute. I decided that I'd just insulate under the bow, ready to receive the water tank. So I've built a frame, and obviously, as you can see now, I've just covered it in a ply, 18mm marine ply. And obviously, I've insulated the whole area under the bow now, just to keep it all nice and toasty, stop the water tank from freezing. Mind you, it was a bit of a squeeze for a big lad, I've got to be honest, but, uh, but hey oh, I managed it. Anyway, uh, it's ply lined, the tank will be well supported, shouldn't have any problems there I don't think. Morning everybody, how you doing, you alright? Back at the boat again of course, as you can see. So, obviously last time we spoke it was all insulated now, I've done underneath the bow. So that's all nice, uh, ready to receive the water tank. Obviously you can see that I've got some of the lighting in. So this is two and a half mil cable. I've split the, there are, there are about 25 lights, uh, down lights on our lighting circuit. Uh, and the only way you can actually run them really in smaller cable, if you like, i.e. not running them in six mil or, um, not running them in six mil or silly size cable, you know, and, uh, to keep the cable sizes down. And what I've done, I've split the circuit into four. So there's four circuits, one for the bedroom, one for the bathroom, one for the lounge, and one for the dining room and kitchen combined. 
and by splitting them into four circuits I've managed to keep the cable sizes down because of the voltage drops so uh, so basically that's how I've got around it uh, so I've run mine in two and a half mil uh, at a push I mean it would have been a bit risky I suppose not not because of current but because of volts drop uh, in when I'd done my cable calculations it worked out that uh, I could have used one and a half but the volts drop would have been about five six percent uh, and some of the manufacturers claim that you can get away with about a, you know with a 10 percent voltage drop but it was a little bit it was a little bit too close for comfort for me so what I've done I've increased my cable sizes to two and a half mil uh, which has brought the volts drop down a bit uh, you know sort of within about three percent uh, which which is which is okay uh, there was never an issue with current draw because these are only LED down lighters they're, they're only three watts each so they're drawing no power at all virtually uh, so uh, I mean obviously if you're gonna run them in if you were gonna run uh, filament lamps then you really I mean I don't advise you do that of course because your your power consumption will be massive but for lighting anyway so uh, stick to LEDs and uh, and like I say, if you uh, do your, do your cal cable calculations, I mean there's a good few uh, there's a good few cable calculators out there now where you can put your lengths in, put your current draw, so how many amps you're going to draw, uh, and uh, I mean for those of you who don't know, uh, obviously there's a power triangle you can use to calculate how you can convert watts and volts and give you your current draw, uh, so. Uh, I'll actually, uh, I'll, 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 I'll put a little diagram up of, uh, of the power triangle, but, uh, but yeah. So uh, you probably see. I've started running the, uh, the cables. Uh, it's two point five millimeters. Obviously, the red being the live or the positive, and the, the black being uh, the negative cables. You can see. The little spurs or the trunking going off to each individual downlight as they'll be uh, on the boat as you can see all the cables are run down the center of the boat on mine just uh, just so I can access them all fairly simply if ever there was to be a problem hopefully there won't be of course but uh, but there you have it that's the lighting circuit installed and obviously as we go through I'll, uh, I'll explain all the other circuits as and when we start to install them. This is where my electric box is going to be up this corner and all the tails will end up going there. This is what the, uh, the wiring at the switch looks like. Obviously so important to label up everything so you know what's, uh, what wires doing what. Uh, Mine's two-way lighting in every, on every circuit, and I've got four circuits, so that's why there looks like there's quite a few wires. For anyone who's interested, this is my drawing. This is the drawing of my boat, which I, I drew, oh crikey, ages ago before we even had the boat. So it is to scale. If you have a close look at it, uh, I converted, it's a 57-foot boat, and I converted all the sizes, all the measurements into metric, and then I, uh, for every 10 centimetres, I drew it so that 10 centimetres equaled 1 centimetre. So it is to scale. Good hey, morning, everyone. Hope you're all well. Back on the boat again. So uh, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining me again on, uh, on the boat, as obviously I'm diarying, uh, diarying everything that I'm, uh, that I'm doing on the boat. So uh, hopefully... When someone else tries to take on a project like this, then my ideas might help them out. But uh, but yeah, so here we are again, uh, and it's the start of the panelling, which I'm really pleased about. So uh, so some of the wiring's done, not all of it, uh, and the reason not all of it's done is because I ain't got to do it all yet. Uh, like I say, the, the channeling above the boat where all the cabling is going to be run, obviously that's still exposed and will be until, uh, you know, until, well, very near the end of the boat build. 
so I, so I can run cabling as and when I need to really so I don't need to get it all in uh, but uh, but yeah but I have got all the ducting in uh, so I'll show you that in just a sec uh, and so obviously I can pop my cables down the ducts uh, which allows me to, to get the panelling on so uh, so I'm going to start today by doing uh, by by putting the shower panelling up because obviously the layout of our boat uh, we're going to have we don't want a walk through bathroom we want uh, uh, an off corridor bathroom so uh, so let me just show you now uh, I've marked out on the floor where all the partitions are going and the bulkheads uh, so uh, let me just show you then. So, excuse the mess, because uh, the cleaner ain't been in today. But uh, but you can probably see on the floor. Can you see? I've just marked out where the bulkheads are going. So uh, and it is actually to scale on the floor. So all my lines are down where everything's going. Let me just walk you up the boat a little bit more. There's another one. Look, like I say, just drawn on the floor. And this is where another bulkhead's going to go. And again, we're having a cupboard here. So the layout of the room anyway. So the layout of the boat's going to be obviously from the pointy end. So we're going to have, just up this corner now, we're going to have a 600, just a 600 wide uh, wardrobe. And obviously the bed's going to go, the bed's going to go here. To this bulkhead, so I don't think you can see that on the floor. And then we're going to have a cupboard here, which is where the washing machines go in. Uh, this is the feeds, obviously, to the uh, to the washing machine. Up here, you can see the ducting. See the ducting I've run, because there's going to be a, a cabinet above uh, above the bedroom bulkhead here, and obviously all the Wi-Fi cabling, the TV aerial cabling is going to come into here to a booster. And obviously the Wi-Fi, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi router. And again, there's a supply to everything. So it'll all come together as we go down. You can see I routed some more ducting down here, right the way down here. See, it's chased in the wall, and that comes out where the media cabinet's going to be, where the TV cabinet's going. Uh, but today, I want to focus on getting the uh, getting the bulkhead in for the bathroom so there's the bulkhead up again i hope you can see it on the floor but i've uh, i've lined across where the bulkhead for the bathroom is going to start and again i've also penciled it on there so i know roughly where it's going but uh, so anyway i'll put you on the tripod and then uh, and then you can see uh, see me starting to build it see you in a second. 